In this episode, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about school social work from whether the college you choose actually matters and beefing up your resume to learning on the job, aka faking it till you make it and tackling tough conversations with students. This video has you covered. Do you think you learn the most in school or when you actually start working as an LMSW? I think as a student in school, you have the opportunity to ask all the questions and shadow all the social workers that you can. And definitely be green. Don't think you have to know it all. Ask all your questions. There's no questions that are dumb when you're a student. However, once you're at the LMSW, you kind of get that feeling that you can't ask questions anymore. At least I did. But as a student, I would definitely ask all the questions, shadow, follow around social workers, watch what they do all day. That's the best way to learn. I like hands-on learning. That's why you'll find on my channel very tangible tips and advice and things like that. I love doing day in the life so you can see how that looks. Um, but I would definitely ask a lot of questions as a student. That's the best way to learn. And then when you're actually in your program, you're going to learn whether you want to or not just by making mistakes, by trying new things, by being forced into the space of actually putting social work into practice. It is harder to learn, learn though. So I guess I see where this question is getting at in a sense, because from the books, I don't feel like I learned as much. That's why when y'all ask for book recommendations, things like that, um, I do have some recommendations. I share them on Instagram all the time. I get gifted some books and resources that I get to try out and then I share out with you what I found the most helpful. Specifically for a school district, what jobs can she look forward to? And so I answer this in my stories. I'm gonna look at my answer and kind of show it to y'all. The first job I would say matches well with a social worker or social work background or degree is a behavioral specialist. I would want to work in a secondary school, a middle school or a high school as a behavior specialist because that allows you to work with the students that are either on the autism spectrum or they have some sort of mental health issues or concerns, something where they're needing help regulating or managing their emotions and their behaviors. So this is a real quick way to get the exposure. So if you're thinking of going into school social work or working in schools, that would be a great population to get some experience with so that you can step into your master's program and then eventually become a school social worker. Parent liaison is another great opportunity. Parent liaisons work within sometimes a school or a school district and what they do is they are the link between the home and the school. May sound familiar because that's what school social workers do. So this is a perfect well-aligned job to get started with to see if social work is is great for you so parent liaison also uh, working in communities and schools would be a good step in most communities and schools just need a bachelor's I believe a bachelor's degree in anything it doesn't even have to be in social work it could be a bachelor's in anything and you get to work out of the school so this is elementary middle or high school you would not be a district employee, but you would be work alongside school counselors and school social workers. You get your referrals from teachers, from families, from counselors and social workers to be able to connect students and keep them engaged in school, prevent dropouts, things like that. There's just so many things that communities and schools does, but as a site coordinator, you can definitely make a big difference and work within the school district with the school schedule. And then the last I would say is look into after school programs like an after school program coordinator or director. Um, someone that manages and runs the after school program is a great way to see if you mesh well with that population. Also a great way to connect with students of all needs and build enrichment opportunities for them and get connected to them and things like that. Do groups, I've seen yoga practices, dance clubs. Those are some things I would honestly check out. Another question here, will you be doing social work takeovers again? I used to do a lot of takeovers um, and kind of feature the day in the life of different social workers. My Instagram page has grown so much that I don't feel comfortable sharing out my password and doing those things over on Instagram. But I do hear that this is something that a lot of my followers really enjoyed. And I'm trying to think of a way to do that. I don't know if I would have to start a whole nother page just maybe for takeovers. 
Do you have any recommendations to address racism with fourth through eighth grade? I think the topic of social justice and racism and all the isms is something that's great for school social workers to tackle with every month. We have that opportunity. February is Black History Month. I would definitely discuss differences and race and bring those to the forefront. Loop in your administrator and get a buy-in from them. You don't want to do things that they're not aware of. Um, make sure that they're aware of the different curriculums you're bringing in or activities that you're wanting to do. Or restorative justice would be a great way to start tackling those tougher conversations. But definitely something, if you can infuse it early on, the earlier the better. Maybe it's University of Texas at Arlington versus UT Austin. Is the price of UT worth it? Yikes, guys. Uh, you may know that I graduated from UT Austin. Now the UT School of Social Work is called the Steve Hicks School of Social Work. It can be pricey. I did save a lot of money to be able to pay off my loans and that's all done and well behind me now. Um, Cause I'm a big saver, I don't spend very much. I did a video on ways to pay for graduate school, ways that are kind of out of the box. Um, so if you're looking for that, I would check out that video. But do I think it's worth it? I, I honestly, I do. I don't have a lot, I'm not gonna say I have zero, but I don't have a lot of imposter syndrome because my degree and experience at UT really helped me shed that imposter syndrome. I'll be honest, throughout all of my, my, my years at UT, I felt like an imposter. I felt like I was going to be found out. I felt like I didn't belong. Um, it was a lot of dark nights of the soul while I was at UT and it kind of chipped away at any anxieties that I had about my ability to take up space. So that is something, if you can get rid of that by the age of 23, then, I mean, I say it's well worth it. I was 23 when I graduated with my master's from UT and um, I just felt like there was nothing I, I couldn't do. Like if I could survive there, I could survive anywhere. If you're trying to deal with imposter syndrome, I am sharing all my tips and tricks in this video. So I will see you over there. And until next time, I'm wishing you social work success.